Hello there, sweet friends, and welcome to Stellar J Studios. I am Gina, and I am thrilled that you are here with me today. So this is my envelope journal that I created in my Trashed and Treasured course. If you haven't heard about this, it's a free course I'm offering on my website, StellarJStudios.com. So just click in the link, and you'll be able to get enrolled for free. But in this journal, I've had some questions about some of the items that I collaged when we were creating this. And so let me see if I can find a couple of them. So this was one of them. Uh, this is another one. Um, these were some little pieces of these collage papers. But this is a really good example of what I'm talking about. So in the course, I was showing you how I was um, doing all this collaging and painting, and I pulled out some little note papers that I had made. Um, one day I was bored and all I had on supplies were a Sharpie, paper, note, little like note papers, and some Crayola or water-based markers. And what I created were these fun little pieces of paper that I then put into uh, this journal when I was creating it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with basic papers. I'm not gonna get anything fancy. So uh, this would be a basic paper. These, this was actually the little notepad that I used. I have a notepad from when I was Teacher of the Year in 2011 that they gave me um, like, 20 of these and yeah so I'm still using them. Uh, notebook paper would be fine. Here's another little notepad. You could use a sticky note. I think what I'm going to do is just cut down these papers. The other thing is I want something that's going to be uh, waterproof and I'm just going to stick this little piece of plastic. I'm just going to stick that down. I'm gonna want some water. Spray bottle water works fine. I got it. plenty of markers. Here's my markers. Here's my papers. Here's my Sharpies. So if I remember correctly, the first thing I did was I just um, took my papers and I just kind of made some doodles with the Sharpie. Now I'm ready to apply my markers. All right, if I remember correctly, I just went in and made some juicy, some juicy color and just kind of added some stuff any which way. I don't think I thought too much about it. Let's just take I'm getting pretty I'm juicy. I'm seeing that the water is going through. I also see these little spots and I like that. I like that a lot. So I need to move these over to a place where they are going to try. And I, I'm gonna, I don't care if they run. It doesn't bother me too much. Like I said, it's gonna get super juicy and super but, wet. Yeah, so that's what I'm looking for. All right, working off this water that I already have here, let's go in with a couple more. And so it's gonna pick up the water that's already there. Now I will tell you, you don't want to get the tip of your markers wet. They, they, they won't work, it'll, it'll undo the um, process of the, like it's almost like a capillary action where the water or the ink is being, the dye is actually being pulled up to the top of the marker. And if you get the tip wet, it's gonna mess up that process. So I'm just kind of going in on the dry parts of the marker. And you can see this 
paper uh, was definitely thinner than this over here because there's a lot more dry spots. So now let's take, let's do the same thing. Let's just splatter. And we'll see the different papers, how the different papers affect your, your marks. Um, some papers may run more than others. So I see we got a lot of, I'm going to turn this over and grab some of that green that's already down there. Okay, there's that. Now, this paper being a little thicker, plus this paper is older, too. Ooh, check that. Ooh, look, the fine, little fine lines that I made. Those are kind of cool. Okay, I like that, and I don't want to disturb it too much. Let me see if I can pick up some of this. Okay, cool. I like it. All right, let's put these over to dry. Oh, all right, notice <laughs> my paper is so wet. It's starting to, uh... ooh, look. I'm dripping ink on this one. I like that. Ooh, yeah. See, we're just finding we're just finding cool things. Okay, but back to this. My paper is starting to tear. No big deal because when it dries, it'll just it'll just be nice and I'm gonna crunch. wipe this off. And let's go back to a dry surface. Okay, one of my favorite ones I did was that whole rainbow thing that I had going on. So I'm gonna see if I can recreate that. By the way. Highlighters are amazing. So if you have a highlighter, try that. Okay, drip it on there. Now my drops are big, juicy drops. If you don't want to do big juicy drops, you could do little sprinkles. That's fine too, but I want big juicy drops. Ooh, all right. I already love that. So that right there, that is what I'm talking about with chromatography. It's pulling. The water is wicking through the paper and it's pulling through the ink and it will pull out all those colors and you'll start to see all the colors that go into the, the actual marker itself. So when you do it with red, red's going to be primary. So there's not a, there's not anything in this, maybe a little bit of yellow, but this is a primary color, so it's not made of, technically, it's not made of anything um, except red. But when you start getting colors that do have a lot of colors in them, so gray, black, brown, that's where you're going to start to see that chromatography, and you're going to see the, the colors being Man, pulled there out. is a groovy, groovy little... I'm gonna hold this up here, see if you guys can see it. So, whoops, there we go. That gray, see how it pulled out and you can start to see the pinks and stuff? I'm gonna maybe do one whole one with gray so you can kind of see all the other, or see it on a bigger scale. So, I like this one because there's some places where the water didn't touch. Again, this was a thicker paper. So, I'm, I'm gonna take this one off and I'm gonna let it this dry. This one, a thinner paper, totally saturated right now. I think what I'm going to do is let's flip it over and let's stick it in some of the color that's already here. Ooh. Okay, cool. I'm going to take this, just soak up what I already have. That's going to be cool. Okay. All right, Got let's it. do something a little different. Let's take this one. Let's take a crayon. Move this over because I want it to be dry. Let's take a crayon. And let's just make some marks. Sorry about my arm. My crayons are over here. Let's just make some marks with this crayon. Now, we know that the crayon is not going to be activated by the water. So, that's going to give us some sort of a little effect. Be interested in this and see what happens. Okay. Ooh, so you can see where the wax was. All right. Now, I have a little place right here that there has, and I'm gonna, hopefully this is in. You guys can see it, make sure. Okay, so I am gonna take 
let's just put a little green because this is dry right here. Let's just put a little green and let's just put it there for just a second. And now let's let it drip and run. Wipe this off. I'm going to take my gray and I'm just going to go in the center. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I want, let me pull, let me pull a brown. So this is a, ooh, cinnamon. This is a Mr. Sketch brown and it's super juicy. Okay. So I'm going to put that in there. And let's just put a little yellow. Now, yellow is primary again, so I'm not expecting any colors to come out of this when I get it wet. Um, it's just going to spread the yellow. Okay, so with chromatography, I don't want it to go, I don't want to put water all over the place. What I want is water in the center. Now, typically when I do chromatography, we do, um, we actually have them, you know, like clipped and then the water will go up because uh, it's a whole, there's a whole scientific process of why it's going up. But we'll just set it here. I have done them laying down before. And if I do it, cor you know, if I do it correctly and the paper works well with us, we should get it to run. Now, I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to spray just right there in the center. And what I'm wanting is this water is going to actually spread through the paper. There we go. And as it spreads through the paper, it's going to pull the inks out or pull the dyes out. Okay. And it's going to take a little while. And you can see it going. And I can already see, I can already see the pinks. It's pulling the pinks through. Now, I don't want any water out here because what I'm doing is I'm wanting my, my wet, it's going to go to the dry paper. The dry paper is going to pull that water out because the water is wanting to go to the drier place. And so that's when it's going to spread. Okay. Ooh, do I put more? I think we'll put a little bit more. See what happens. Okay, now I'm going to, let me see if I can get a, get a juicy paintbrush here. Okay, so now let's go through our brown and let's put, let's put some water on this brown, see if we can get it to run too. And I go ahead and do my yellow because I know all the yellow is going to do is just spread out. Ooh, yeah, so again, I'm getting a little bit of the chromatography effect. When when I would do this in the classroom, oh my gosh, the kids, we'd use coffee filters or paper towels, and the kids would just freak out because they, nobody wanted to use brown or black or gray. They wanted to use like the blues and the pinks and oranges, and it's like, no, these are the colors that give you the, the best um like it's just, yeah, this is just magic. I never, ever get tired of doing chromatography stuff. Now you can do this and we would do this with uh, Sharpie markers, but you have to use um, alcohol in order to get it to activate. It's not gonna activate by water. Okay, I'm loving this and you can see with the brown, you can see how it's pulling out pinks and oranges. I just, yeah, that's good stuff. So I don't wanna disturb this because I want it to keep running. Whoops, I disturbed it a little. This color. Ooh, make it juicy. Okay, so I got some juice going there. And I'm gonna pull some yellow. Okay, so then what we're gonna do, let's put this in this brown, see what happens. Okay, this is really thin, old paper. So we'll see what this does. Ooh, wow. Okay, so I already got my green and my brown to kind of 
run together. Okay, so I just sprayed one end, and now let's let it run. Let's let it drip. And I'm going to spray, see if it can run through those colors. Kind of, kind of chromatography-ish, although I'm not giving it a lot of space to, to spread out. And that's the trick about chromatography if you, is you want it to spread out. Um, and I'm not really giving it a lot of room to spread out because I got all my paper wet. But I like it. It'll be interesting to see when this dries what that brown is going to do. And I think I'm going to go in one quick splash in the pool. There we go. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna try tissue paper. I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna do the marks like I did earlier, just the black marks. Again, you can use whatever color of Sharpie you wanna use. Are we ready? Okay, let's see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna do drops and I'm gonna make them kind of big. Because I want to keep some of my paper dry so that it will pull the water through. Nice, I like it, I like it. Now, something that also is different is that I have dry paper underneath. And so some of the water is gonna go through and be soaked up by that dry underneath. And that gives us a whole different effect because instead of spreading out as much, it's gonna actually uh, spread into the dry paper below. So you can see that. So then that gives us a cool effect. My plastic back on. I already have some residual water there, and I'm gonna place this face down. Let's see what happens when I do that. Okay. And I'm gonna move it around. 
Now, one of the things I've noticed is that your um, ink or your, your dye from your markers is going to look um, faded when you first put it on. And that's because the, the water is there and it's, it's literally watering it down. But when you go back through after it's dried, your colors will become uh, more vibrant. Okay, so I'm gonna put some marker down. My, pa my tissue paper is still pretty juicy, so I'm gonna throw this down, see what happens. Oh yes, I like that. And I think I got enough water on here that I can give it another go. And again, this is like having my water, I mean my uh, tissue paper, some of it's wet and some of it is dry. And so now that, that uh, the water has a place to go. When you saturate your paper, your water doesn't have a place to go. It just kind of stays. And that's cool, you're just gonna get an overall washed effect. But when you have some dry parts on your paper, your water has a place to go and that's where it pulls the colors and you get more of this, uh, these like, almost like uh, hard lines. Okay, so we're gonna put a little water there, see what happens. And you can see the water is gonna go through the paper. And that's when it pulls the ink and that's where you get that that whole chromatography thing see here's a good example right here that blue see how you can see the hard lines the outlines that's because we had some some dry space and the water wanted to go to that dry space and so it pulled the inks out and then when it couldn't go anymore that's where the ink rested Okay, this this one's good. I like this. We'll, I can't wait to see what this one looks like when it I'm dries. I'm going to let these guys dry, and then I will come back and show you the results. All right, sweet friends. So here we go. Here are some of my finished papers. I have a video where I'll go into more detail about the finishing touches. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you're healthy. I hope you're happy. And I hope you do something creative today. Bye.